master, let the master set you free. Let the master bring his peace to you. You've got to make this your foundation. How Jesus loves and calls it. Welcome to Jesus This Answer Ministries broadcast. I'm Pastor Robert Scales. I tell you, we've had a glorious week in the Word. And, you know, God is speaking to us. And we need to hearken to His voice. I'm teaching on the Lord as my shepherd. This is part two this week. And I shall not want. Want is a killer. Uh, it keeps you out of the Father's love when you're wanting. It just isolates you. From how the Father loved you on the cross. And I talked yesterday how subtle the devil is in getting people to want. And they don't even know it. And God is exposing this. And um, so here, let's go back to Psalm 23. The Lord, don't forget, I'm going to pray for you all today. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me the lad down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. Now you, you can read this, this Psalms inspired by the Holy Ghost. That when the Lord is your shepherd, he's always doing something for you. You're living in something he's done for you. How he forgave you. How he loved you. Uh, how he gave you peace. and How Jesus set you free. When, when he's your shepherd, then he's guiding you he's ruling you he's leading you and and so he leads us beside steel waters ain't you glad uh, he don't lead us beside troubled waters he restored my soul he leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake now here come me in verse 4 yea though I walk he, he never say he lead me in the valley of the shadow of death no, no, no. You and I do too good a job in that area. The Lord don't need to help us walk in no valley and shout of death. And people, bless their heart, ignorant, 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 believe that the great shepherd, the Lord Jesus, would lead you in the depression, lead you in the world. God, why did you let this happen to me? He, he, God lets what you choose happen to you. So you can say that again. God allows what you and I choose to happen to us. Whatever we choose. And I'm going to tell you, saints, one, one of, the, one of the, the greatest tools the enemy uses in people's lives is wanting. That's the reason so many people in the body of Christ are hurt. They're wanting. Listen, there are times when people are not going to come back and tell you they saw them. They don't have to. You can go to Jesus and get healed. You can go to Jesus and get his love and be healed of any situation. You know, the Lord taught me this back in, in 1990, 91. He told me not to watch Roots and all them movies. He said, don't watch that stuff. All it do is uh, 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 take you, isolate you away from my love for you. He said, he said watch stuff where I love. And I'm not against uh, people learning history in school, but make sure that the history ain't your life. Jesus should be Christians' lives. What he did for us, how he loved us. And and, and the Lord taught me. Uh, uh, listen carefully, this is this astounding. Uh, he taught me that whites ain't never did me wrong, blacks ain't never did me wrong. He told me that what he did on the cross has set me free from how people done did me. He said, now forgive everybody like I forgave you because I forgave everybody on the cross and live in my love that has forgiven everybody. Now, now you can be healed. See, once you receive forgiveness, and you forgive people for what they've done to you, you can you can now start the process of, of being healed. And really the process, when people, psychologists got processed, it ain't Jesus. But when you in Jesus' process, the process of his healing is you, once you receive that healing, you resist the thoughts 
of, of that coming back trying to get you back in what you used to do or what the way you've been done. You have to tell those thoughts. No, no, they didn't do me like that. They didn't abuse me unless you're giving a testimony. But when those thoughts are coming to bring you back out of the liberty that Jesus has set you free, you have to resist those thoughts. And, and that the only way you can resist those thoughts, saints, is Jesus is your shepherd. And that you're not wanting and you're not wanting because sometimes you're not going to get what you want. But you can get what you trust Jesus for. The Bible said, as I was teaching you all about seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. These doctrines of devils have came in the church. I've had people recently calling me, wanting me to get in, in, in business, in different things, and then get all the church involved. So... Uh, you know, it, they said it would be very profitable to you, but I'm not getting into that. Because the, 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 the ministry, the church should not be a, a, a money-making business. I tell the saints, y'all go do that. Y'all bring the, go make the money and bring it back. No, you know, I, I, I'm just, God's called me in the word and in prayer. He's called me to counsel and minister to his people. You know, and, and, and I'm not against ministers that make money. I just know what the Lord's told me to do. He's always um, had money come to me. People see the anointing, get blessed by my ministry, and they sow into it. I, I just uh, keep doing what the Lord tells me to do and, and, and watch God come through. And, and what, what people do is they, they want you to do something. You scratch my back, I'll scratch your back. You do this for me, I'll do this for you. And sometimes you can't even let people bless you because they want something back. Hey, you remember what I did for you? And and see, when I do stuff for people, I ain't looking for nothing back. I just did it because I love you and blessing you. That's how Jesus loved. And, and, and so when the Lord is your shepherd, he's always doing something for you now. When you walk through the valley and shadow of death, you, you should feel no evil. Even when we make wrong choices, end up in trouble, the Lord says, I'm still there with you. Now, whoo, David, God did not tell David to go to bed with another man's wife, get her pregnant, kill him, you got to be kidding me if you believe that. You are ignorant to the bone. If you believe that God took David through that. David's choice took him through that. And, 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 and David uh, 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 tried to cover it up and everything. God says if you cover your sins in Proverbs 28, 13, you will not prosper. If you confess your sins, he'll give you mercy. And so there's no way you can say God took David through that valley and shot of death. David's choice took him through. See, what the Lord took David to, through was not letting Saul kill him, winning every battle, winning every war. God told him what to do to get his wives and children back. That's God leading. But you can see when David made his choices, he ended up in the valley of the shadow of death. But God said, I'll fear no evil for thou art with me. And you, you know God still was with David? What? David never lost the anointing. Why, Pastor Scales? Because he repented. He repented. And, and, and God knows the heart. And you and I don't. We judge after the outward appearance. God always knows the heart. And I could get in that a little more deeper. But, but we need to understand God knows everything everybody go through. He knows what you went through in your childhood. He knows, you know, that, that, that David um, 
you know, had some wives and talked ugly to them. And Saul gave David his worst daughter. And, and the Bible said in Samuel that, that Saul gave uh, Michael to David so that she would be a snare to him. He knew she was a witch. And he knew how she argued and fussed and was stubborn. He knew, Saul knew whoever she married, she was going to be a snare to him. And you can look at little girls today and tell if they're going to be a blessing or a snare. They talk back. They don't want to be told what to do. You can tell. And and, and so you, you don't see everything like God sees. And then Saul, who was king of Israel, didn't even do nothing like that. And he lost the kingdom. Why? Because he would not do what God said. And that's one thing about David. He, he messed up. He did wrong. He sinned against God. But he always did what the Lord told him to do. And God blessed him for that. And David didn't even lose the anointing. But let me tell you what happened to David by wanting something that wasn't his. He lost he lost son. His daughter got raped. David reaped what he sowed. He took another man's wife. He lost all of his. He slept with another man's wife and somebody slept with all of his. He reaped what he sowed. But you cannot, and you, it's, it, it's, it's ludicrous for you to believe that God took David through that, that valley and shadow that God didn't do that. David did. But David said, I'll fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and staff comfort me. He repented. Thou prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anointed my head with oil. Look, look, look. He, look there go God back giving. Thou anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Look, God's giving. Surely goodness and mercy. He's your shepherd. Shall follow me. Look, God, look, the Lord Jesus giving all the days of my life. And I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In Jesus' name. I always pray that in Jesus' name. Are y'all listening? And, 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 and so we, we've got to understand, saints, the key to Jesus Christ being your shepherd is in James 4, verse 6. And uh, this is the key. This is the key if you if you want to keep those spirits uh, from, from having place in your life. Then here's what you must do every day. I do this every day of the year. But he gives more grace. Wherefore, God saith, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. He resists the wanting people. He resists. You, you shouldn't want to be married. You, you should desire to be married and then trust God to bring your spouse. You should not have nothing else to do with that no more. You can go back and look at the Abraham and 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 and, uh, and Sarah and God told Abraham that I'm going to bless you and your seed and Abraham and, and, and Sarah ended up giving him her maid and, 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 uh, and Abraham had a child by her, Ismael. And Ishmael still today is harassing Isaac. Why? Because they were wanting to help God out. They, they, they really felt like God could not do what he promised. And many people today in the church are like that. And so they go out, they date this person, date this person, try this person, do this. Never, never get in the presence of God. Never seek God to wait to hear his voice before you even give them a pinch of your time, you should hear from God first. You should never give your emotions and your feelings to anyone until you have heard God's voice and they have heard God's voice and their parents have heard God's voice and your father in the faith have heard God's voice and then you can, can begin to get to know them. Amen. And, and, and a lot of times people don't have wisdom. God resists the proud. This is what first give God loves everybody. Yeah, he also resists people living in wants. What do you mean, Pastor Scales? He doesn't get to show up and do nothing for them in that area. Now, 
David kept the anointing. But look at all the destruction and look at all he went through. And God still brought him through that. But it was very painful. And I, I just, it's, it's just, a, you know, alarming that preachers would tell people that God is taking them through this to teach them. When God is allowing what they have allowed. And even though God wants to teach you. He, he, listen, a lot of tests and trials, God never teaches people. Because the test and trial taught you that this was painful. You shouldn't have done this. You shouldn't have made that choice. So you learn from your pain. Or if you learn from the word, you never got any pain. When God teaches you, you'll never do it. You learn from other people. Wow, man, I'm glad I ain't live like that. Wow, I'm glad I ain't do. Woo, look what they went through. And so when we read these stories in the Bible, it's to help us not to go through that, to learn from their mistakes. So we, we walk by faith in Jesus and we don't make them. Amen. And so he gives grace to the humble, them who bow their knee and lay their dependency on Jesus Christ as our shepherd. You're never wanting when you lay your dependency on Jesus. You're, you're not wanting. You're not giving the devil place unless you're living in want. A lot of people want to be debt free, want to be financially free. They, they don't never get it. They just frustrated. It ain't working. Why is it taking so long? But I'll tell you all, how I got debt free. And we, we paid off our church. We, we never borrowed a dime. I, I'm so glad I ain't had to fill out no paper and go to no bank. I went to the bank of Jesus. The bank of heaven. And you know, you know what I did? I just believed that Jesus Christ, if he could, uh, you know, take two fish and five loaves of bread and feed 15,000 people, that's men, women, and children. Surely he could bring the money and pay off my house. I, I went and found Jesus doing miracles. And I transferred that, that if Jesus could do that, he can do this for me. If he had the power to do this on earth, he's got the power to do this on earth in my life today. And do you know I sought the Lord and waited on him till he told me what to do? And when he told me what to do, I done that, bam, and I got I got my house paid off. And I out of debt completely. And 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 um so and I'm I'm believing God when I get my next house closer to the church that um that 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 I'm gonna move in it debt free. And and uh unless the Lord tell me something else. So listen, saints, in closing today, before I get ready to pray with you all. The key to defeating want is to, to let patience have a perfect work where you be entire and, and, and wanting nothing. You're trusting Jesus and with patience where you don't succumb to the circumstance. You don't let the pressure of what your problem is cause you to start wavering and doubting and wanting where you get in there and try to work that thing out yourself. And ooh, are you going to make a mess? Many women today, children grown, wish they had never had got pregnant at an early age. Many children today wish they had a grew up with a father. And so I'm, I'm telling y'all, even though you wish, you know, I hear people say this, and I wish I'd have been saved earlier. What, what for? You, you, you never gonna be saved earlier. Why don't you thank God that you saved now? It's no sense in talking like that. It's not gonna produce fruit, but Jesus will produce fruit. So Jesus said, "Submit to God. Resist the devil. He will flee from you." Now, in closing, listen carefully. In John 15. Verse 2. And we'll close with this and then I'm going to pray with you all 
This is a good way to close. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, Jesus takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he purges it that it may bring forth more fruit. So every time you, you win in an area, Jesus is ready to cut off something else and correct you by something so that you can bring more fruit. Don't get tired of that. Embrace it. Jesus said that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Now listen to verse 5, verse 4 of John 15. Abide in me. Listen, listen. And I, Jesus, in you. And see, see, he ain't talking about you. Jesus said, abide in me. That's you and I abiding in Jesus. Then Jesus get to abide and live in us to tell us what to do. As the branch, you and me, cannot bear fruit of ourselves. We can't make nothing happen by ourselves. So it's no sense in us never living in want. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. Jesus said, no more can you except you abide in me. So that means our whole life as Christians should be centered around looking unto Jesus, trusting in Jesus, knowing that without Jesus, we can do nothing. Jesus said, I am the vine. And you are the branches. Jesus said, he that abideth in me and I in him. See, no you in that. The same bringeth forth much fruit. I get these words. For without me, you can do nothing. Now, now, now listen, if you're struggling today, it's because you're without Jesus. I've had people argue with me. I'm trusting the Lord, but I'm depressed. No, no, you can't trust Jesus and be depressed. He gives peace. He gives peace to the weary. He gives strength to the weak. And he ain't holding it back from nobody. People are not looking that without Jesus you can do nothing. All of you that are struggling, all you need to do is pray with me today. Receive Jesus' love. Let Jesus begin to be the answer to all that you're facing. Let Jesus become your shepherd where you quit wanting and you start living in, abiding in him and him in you so that Jesus can teach you how to overcome the world, how to be tempted and not sin, how to get his wisdom, his righteousness, his sanctification, his redemption. Pray this with me today. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart that you came on this earth and died for my sins. I believe in my heart you took all my sins away. And on the third day, I believe in my heart God's mighty power raised Jesus from the dead. Come in my heart, Lord Jesus, and save me and change me and give me eternal life. I repent of my sin. The sin of unbelief. I turn from unbelief. And put my trust in you Lord Jesus. Now I believe. I receive. Forgiveness. Of all my sins. Thank you Lord Jesus. Now I want to pray with you all that are sick. Point your hands toward the screen. Father, I thank you. Oh, glory to God. That's the anointing. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, I loose you from that infirmity. By the authority of Jesus of Nazareth, Satan, I command you to take your hands off their bodies. I speak the life of Christ in their bodies. And Father, I come against those demons of oppression, those spirits of antichrist. I render you powerless in the name of Jesus. I command you to take your hands off their mind, and I command you to loose their money in Jesus' name. Where they can give in the kingdom, and they can walk in the blessings of the Lord. 
Father, I thank you that their lives will never be the same after today. In Jesus' name. Now begin to thank the Lord. Begin to thank him and praise him. That's the key to you walking in, not wanting to be healed no more. Not wanting the Lord. And now you're believing you received it. Hallelujah. Rejoice. Hallelujah. I rejoice with you. The Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. I want to make available to you this six CD series. Um, the Lord is my shepherd part two and part one for a special love gift for $50 or more. If you ask me, I'll throw you in a free book, God's Grace Explained. And saints, these, I, I'm telling you, they are so anointed. Every pastor that has, has got these, life totally changed. And, and you don't even know how much you want. But once you hear this revelation, it'll open that up and God will begin to expose some things and cause more light to be lived in your life. And on the screen, you can you can go to robertscaleministries.org. You can uh, get these online and you can use a credit card. And also you can write us, post office box, make your checks and money orders to Jesus and some ministries. Post office box 292-112, Nashville, Tennessee, 37229. All of these. I'm telling you, there'll be a tremendous blessing and they'll help us also in the ministry. Also, I want to invite y'all to Jesus as a church. Don't forget, we stream our services live at Jesus as a church and on, on a podcast. So go to robertscaleministries.org and check us out. Sunday morning, 9 o'clock, Sunday school, 10 o'clock, regular service, and also 7 o'clock p.m. Amen. A church that's alive is worth the drive. Amen. You'll be blessed. Also, I want to thank my partners and my friends and saints. I'm telling you, I thank God for many of you that that pray and, and you obey the Lord. Ask the Lord what he had you to do. You can go on, on, our, on our web page, robertscalesministry.org. You can donate with your credit cards. Thank you so much, saints, for helping me to get the gospel out. I just pray that you will pray. God has put my, uh, me in many of you all's hearts. Amen. And, and uh, you really love the ministry. You love the teaching. So ask him what he would have you to do. Not only do God want to bless you and has he blessed you through the broadcast, but he want to make you a blessing so that we can reach out and help others. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, my time is up. I, I tell you, it's been glorious teaching on the Lord is my shepherd. My prayer for you, saints. Is that you will know the love of Christ that passes knowledge and be filled with all the fullness of God from Jesus. It's the answer ministries. I'm Pastor Robert Skills. Remember, saints, as Jesus loved you on the cross, go live that love to everybody. Have a blessed weekend. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>